Okay, time to do a vlog. So I've got a day off. I'm not doing anything in particular. Middle-aged geek girl has gone into the city of Melbourne to hang out with a whole bunch of other friends. And I'm going to cruise thrift shops, basically. I've um, already hit one, the St. Vinnie's, which you can see just in the background there. Hang on, let me open the window so you can see it. Turn the car engine on, open the window. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, and the radio's on, so I've got to turn that off. Hang on. Yes, I've already hit there. Um, pretty good thrift score. I picked up some records, I picked up a CD, I picked up a movie book, and I picked up a DVD, all for $13, and I'll do a bit of a um, view of those at the end of this particular video. So yeah, it's um, quite a cold day for springtime here, the wind's chilly, um, I'm rugged up against the temperature, and I'm going to cruise through a couple of towns, Bacchus Marsh and Melton and just see what I can find very cheaply to increase the amount of movie related stuff that I have in the man cave and at home. So, um, on to the next place. St. Vinny's first. I don't know whether you can hear this because of the traffic noise, but all things very cheaply, and um, we're going to see how it goes. Okay, I've hit two more up shops and found a whole bunch of DVDs and other weird and wonderful things. So I'm going to leave Bacchus Marsh now and I'm going to head down to Melton, see what we can find. Uh, that wind outside is cold though, it's pretty damn nasty. So I'm going to try to stay rugged up and uh, spend a little money but not too much, otherwise middle-aged geek girl might get cranky. So I'll see you soon. Later. Okay, so I made it to Melton and there's not much here, there are a couple of um, thrift store op shop places, but nothing with anything I want in them. On the other hand, there is a plus. One of them, a place called Earth Village over here in Melton, has a cafe attached to it, so I managed to get a decent espresso, so cheers. That's actually really nice. Uh, so I'm gonna head back now from Melton, unless I see something on the way, and uh, then I will start doing the haul and showing you exactly what I purchased. So I'll see you guys then. Eventually. Hi guys, this is Jack the cat. Jack is 17 now, is he? 17 or so. And he's been a part of the family for that almost that long. Um, he is the guy who rules the house. So say hi Jack. Hey. And um, I'll get on with the haul. Okay, so here's the haul. I've got a lot of things. I'll do the vinyl and the music first. So first off, we've got Instant Groove. A double CD set of Funkadelic stuff and disco stuff from the 70s. It's got some good stuff on it, actually. It's got Bobby Womack's Across 110th Street, if you haven't seen that before. Or even if you haven't heard it before, you should. And you should also see the movie in which it was done, which is called Across 110th Street. That kicks ass. Uh, it's got some Nina Simone, Curtis Mayfield, James Brown. It has got a really nice selection of different artists. Joe Tex, uh, Sister Sledge. Yeah, I'm kind of happy I got that for a few bucks. Then I went out and bought some licorice pizza. LPs, vinyl, and the first one is 30 smash hits of the war years. Now, whether or not this is going to be any good, I have no bloody idea. It's got a whole bunch of songs people sang during World War II. 
and it's by the concert band and chorus of the RAAF, the Royal Australian Air Force. Uh, it's really weird and wild. It's got Lily Marlene, of course, um, White Cliffs of Dover, Knees Up Mother Brown, all sorts of things. And the cool thing about it is, there is a big insert here with a whole bunch of info about World War II, which I didn't notice at first, but that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how many times I'm going to play this one, but it's nice to have it there. Put it over there. The next one is kind of cool. Uh, 20 Golden Greats, the best of A&M. Now, A&M was a record label in the 60s and 70s. They did a whole bunch of different artists. A little bit middle of the road, but also with some interesting things going on. Things like uh, a bit of Burt Bacharach there. Uh, Sergio Mendes in Brazil 77 doing Fool on the Hill. Uh, Chris Montes, Claudine Langer. It's even got Liza Minnelli for some reason doing Cabaret. I've got no idea why. But yeah, it's kind of cool if you want 70s retro stuff. Got that as well. So that's the vinyl I got. Then I've got one book now. I've got a little bit of room on the shelves for books now. But I'm concentrating on movie reference books as much as possible. And this one's The Hollywood Family Film by Noel Brown. A History from Shirley Temple to Harry Potter. Now I think this may have been a doctoral thesis that somebody turned into a book because it's got pages and pages and pages of reference at the end. But it might be a good little reference book for the podcast or the radio gig I do or even a ch something for the channel. But uh, I thought I'd just grab that. It was uh, $2, so no big loss there if it doesn't turn out to be worth anything. Then I did a whole bunch of DVDs, which is always nice. No Blu-rays. The Blu-rays they tended to have at these op shops, uh, thrift stores, were pretty ordinary. Um, lots of things like oh, the Hangover trilogy and things like that. Um, middle of the road comedies for the most part. So I didn't pick up any of those. But I did get some good stuff regardless just by wading through all of the shit that was there and finding things that may have been a bit interesting. The first one is Zhang Yimou's Curse of the Golden Flower, which is pretty good. Beautiful looking film, lush, lovely. Um, Got Chow Yun Fat in it as well, which is never a bad thing, but I'm really going to enjoy watching this one. It's one of his that I don't have. I do have Hero and I think one other, but I'm looking forward to watching this one. It's going to be a lot of fun to get into. Then staying on the Asian cinema theme, Takeshi Kitano, Boiling Point. Now, Beat Takeshi is an icon in Japan. Started out doing comedy as a part of a comedy duo. Then went on to do a whole bunch of quiz shows and game shows and then became a kick-ass maker of cinema, particularly in very hard-boiled roles. Now, there's not too much. It was his second feature film, according to this. And it's got a lot of guns and gangsters, which is always a nice thing. I'm going to enjoy that one. It does have English subtitles, which is fortunate. And, um, yeah, for $2, I'm definitely happy I got that. Third one, I've got three pieces of Asian cinema, is Death Trance, another Japanese film, um, which I know nothing about. I know that it's got guys with swords in it. I know that it's probably got a hell of a lot of action in it, but I'm going in on this one cold. It's from Madman's Eastern Eye label, and Madman do a lot of anime and Asian cinema releases here in Australia. So looking forward to that one as well. And um, yeah, not sure what exactly is going to happen when I watch it, but I'm just going to go along for the ride. I'm going to go in cold and just see what happens. Then I went retro. Now, there was about nearly 20 years ago now, there was a brief um, company label that came out doing DVDs called Hollyweird. And this is one of their ones. I picked it up for a dollar. The, blame f the, the Brain from Planet Aris. Now, this is a weird movie. I watched it yesterday. The DVD is in great condition. This one's about a giant disembodied brain from outer space that takes over a guy and spends most of the rest of the movie macking on his girlfriend. It's weird and the sexual politics in it is really, really stuffed up. But it kind of is a bit of fun. Uh, a little bit of a deus ex machina ending where another brain comes and tells him how to kill the first one. But um, it's 71 minutes, it doesn't run too long, it's from 1958, it's in black and white, can't go wrong. 
Then I went with an animated film, which is kind of unexpected, but it does have its place in cinema history. It's a version of Lord of the Rings directed by Ralph Bakshi back in 1978. Uh, this one's really interesting because they tried to do it on a fairly low budget as an animated feature telling the whole story of Lord of the Rings. Problem was, they didn't have a lot of money, so there's a lot of rotoscoped animation in this one. But it's a bold effort. It was Nobody else was doing anything with Tolkien at the time. The technology wasn't quite there to do the things Peter Jackson did with the franchise and the intellectual property later on. But if you want to be a completist and you want to understand the history of adaptations of Tolkien, can't go past this version of The Lord of the Rings from 1978. <coughs> Then I went with TV. There are a hell of a lot of TV seasons on DVD in the various shops. Really ordinary stuff like, you know, lifestyle shows that were on TV 10 years ago. All of the box sets of those turn up at uh, these op shops. And I didn't get any of those, but I did spot this one. I picked it up for $5. It's season two of Kojak, starring Telly Savalas. Loves you, baby. You're beautiful. Nice little cop show from the 70s, filmed on the streets of New York. Iconic in its time and a lot of fun. So I'm going to go through some episodes, see who the guest stars are, because with this kind of episodic cop show, you get a lot of people who are famous later on or a lot of people who are famous before turning up as guest stars in these shows. So I'm looking forward to this one. Then second last, I picked up um, a version of Jungle Book. Now I'm not talking about the animated Disney version. I'm not talking about either of the two live action ones, including the one Andy Serkis did very, very recently. I'm talking about the one from the 1940s starring Sabu. Now, the weird thing about this one, and I'll show you this, it opens in a weird way. And this, the disc comes out like that. So it folds down, disc comes out like that. It's a really weird form factor. It's actually a US pressing from probably about 20 years ago. And it's, um, it's a movie that I can't really get easily any other way. Picked it up for a dollar. It was definitely worth getting. And I may well end up doing this on a podcast just to kind of compare it with newer versions of the story. Then finally, I'm a sucker for musicals. Classic Hollywood musicals are definitely one of the things I'm interested in. And there are a couple that I didn't have. I'll keep looking out for them. This is one of them, which is... Rogers and Har which is Rogers and Hammerstein's Carousel, starring Gordon McRae and Shirley Jones. Originally, Frank Sinatra was going to star in this movie. In fact, he filmed a bit of it, and then just wandered off and didn't fulfil his contract. But this one's not the happiest of movies. Um, there's a lot of kind of darker themes in it, but it's still part of that classic 1950s MGM musical heritage. And I'm kind of glad that I got it. So that's it for the haul. All of this stuff I picked up. Oh, actually, there's one or two more things. You're going to like this. First off, I picked up this dinosaur. I don't know where it came from or what it relates to. But I picked it up and it's really weird looking. So it's actually a feathered dinosaur too, which is kind of cool. Picked that up for a dollar just to put in the background here in some of the um, set designs I'm doing. Then I picked up something really weird for $3 at one of the op shops. 70s Kitsch is something I'm kind of interested in. It's a bit of fun. And it's this. It's a beer glass. It says, beer drinkers are better lovers. I don't know whether you can see that. And it's got a bar bell at the bottom so you can ring a bell when you want someone to refill your glass. And the weirdest thing too is, it's actually made from a beer bottle cut in half and then reversed. So I'm going to put that in a um, display case somewhere because it's just a weird part of 1970s kitsch that I picked up very cheaply and I thought I'd just put for display. Now the weird thing too is of course the beer glass is very very small so I'm not too sure why basically but it's weird it's got that lovely 1970s font as well you might see I'll get out of there so you might see it better and yeah, um, I'll occasionally pick up things like that just for the weirdness of them. So anyway, that's about it this time around. Please like and subscribe and tell me anything you've got 
at a op shop or thrift shop haul. I know there are a lot of people on social media who collect things and they just have a passion for them. I'm glad I got this stuff. Um, all of this would have cost me maybe $25 Australian. And that's not bad for the amount of entertainment I'm gonna get from it all. So anyway, please chuck a like and a subscribe there. Let me know what you like collecting. And you can also hit the bell icon to get notifications when a new episode comes out. There'll be something else next weekend. So in the meantime, look after yourselves, watch some good movies, watch some bad movies, watch any kind of movie you like except, well, Adam Sandler films. And I'll see you soon. Take care.